I can't believe we've never done a Q&A before. Today is the day. This is gonna be a blast. <laughs> Let's go. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. How did you learn to play keyboard? It's impressive because so many use a mouse. To be honest, one of my favorite things about music creation is being tactile with the music. So whether it's a piano, a guitar, drum set, as much as I can, I like to play it on the instrument. That's why you guys are gonna see me even playing like hi-hat patterns and drums on the keyboard. I guess the mouse just doesn't do it for me. It makes me feel so detached from the music I'm making and it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel good. <laughs> why Ed Talenti? Well, that's my name. <laughs> Parli anche italiano? See, what city were you in when you studied here in the US? I was in LA. Pineapple belongs on pizza or not? I'm just kidding, I don't care. <laughs> if you like it, enjoy it. I personally don't like it. Can you react to 90s hardcore gabber music? Don't know what that is, so let's see. There is no law. What the hell is this? <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up as a child? I wanted to be a paleontologist. I'm not even kidding. Then I wanted to be a truck driver and eventually a drummer. So I ended up being a music producer. So I don't know. <laughs> what are three tips you wish you knew earlier in your career to help you save time when producing? Okay, I'm gonna keep this one pretty short. Number one, learn and organize your sounds. It's so important to know your library and organize it in a way that it's easy to access. So whenever you need a sound, you don't need to go dive into the, the terabytes of stuff that you have on your hard drive, but you just kind of know where to go. You know what you're looking for and you can just go and grab it. Number two is set the tone. Basically defining what's the intent of the music that you're about to make. Is this a beat that's gonna go in your store? Is this a beat you're making for a specific artist you're working with? Is this a beat that you're just making to experiment with a new plugin you just bought? It doesn't matter what the answer is but the important part is that you know what you're making music for before you actually start and number three don't overthink it get your idea out as quickly as possible and get it to a state where it's basically finished maybe you just have to put some final touches but it's done I remember so many times where I used to have a good idea I felt that energy I started building it up but then I got distracted for example like I was trying to mix the drums or something I just got so far from the original energy and the original idea that by the time I got back to it I just had completely lost all sort of connection to that music would you rather fight two chimpanzees or one gorilla. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Probably the one gorilla. I mean, the gorilla is like way stronger, but I feel like if I can focus on a single target, I'm gonna be able to understand their tactics a lot better, like the way they move, and I'll be able to eventually do something. <laughs> can you play Dr. Dre still Dre piano? Is producing your full-time job? Yes, it is. Or I guess sort of. I mean, right now my main thing is YouTube, so this is where I focus a lot of my time. But I do have a music production channel, so I do music production all day. I'll leave the conclusions to you. <laughs> I don't know exactly how you want to define it, but yes, this is my main job. Should producers learn music theory? This is always a tough one, but short answer, yes. So here's why I think as a producer, you should learn a little bit of music theory. Music theory is kind of like the grammar of music. When you learn a new language, you don't need to know the grammar. You don't need to know all the rules in order to use it, even fluently. In fact, we all experienced this when we were kids and we learned our first language. Nobody taught us grammar or anything like that. We were just in that environment, surrounded by people speaking that language. And then later on, we grow up, we go to school and they teach us grammar. We start understanding our own language in a much better, deeper way. So I I do believe that the best way to make music and to learn music is through instinct, just by listening, understanding what you like and what you don't like, breaking it down, analyzing it, understanding which elements you are enjoying and why, and then eventually implementing that into your own music and expressing yourself through your art. To me, music theory comes in a little bit later and it's an incredible tool to understand and analyze your own taste and your own art and break it down into why you're doing the things you're doing. How do we know if our music is perfect in all aspects? Art is never finished, only abandoned. I I think that's a quote by Leonardo da Vinci, but somebody said that. <laughs> in my opinion, when it comes to music, when it comes to art in general, you shouldn't really focus on making it perfect, but you should focus on making it the truest to what is your intention. In other words, the only question that really matters is, are you happy with your music? Are you happy with the stuff that you're making? Does it make you happy? Does it fulfill you? Are you proud of it? I'm proud of you! If the answer to those questions is no, then your journey should be to try and get as close as possible to that. Ultimately, there's no point in comparing your music to other people's music, if it's better, if it's worse, if it's good, if it's bad. It's such a personal, like subjective thing that it doesn't really make sense to compare it to anything else other than yourself. So basically, is the music you're making today better than the music you were making yesterday? That's all that matters. Favorite instrument to play in real life and favorite instrument to listen, put on beats. Right now, I'm definitely in a guitar phase. I've been practicing guitar, I've been studying guitar. I wanna get good at it and 
that's what I'm obsessed with at the moment. To be honest with you though, if you ask me this question in like a month or two months, my answer will probably be different. It just changes a lot. How do you organize your day for producing, learning instrument, DAW skills, editing, etc.? I would honestly be lying if I said I have a super tight schedule, like everything planned out, like to the minute. It's not like that. I spend most of my day planning and working on these videos, coming up with ideas, shooting them, and then editing and getting everything ready. And then usually at night, it's the time where I kind of just make music. I feel like the last couple hours before I go to bed is when I'm the most inspired, like music wise and that's the time that I usually use to like practice something new or learn a new skill or just make music for myself that doesn't even ever make it out there like I just experiment and just have fun I'm not really sure if that's a good answer for your question but it's the best I got <laughs> when starting a beat do you have an idea in your head that you're trying to recreate or do you just let the sound guide you? I feel like my perspective on this is mostly gonna apply to pop hip-hop electronic producers but generally I don't start with an idea what I'm chasing is a mood I feel like that's because a lot of the music that I make is very timbre based rather than harmony based for example, when you're making music for a rock band, you pretty much know which sounds you're gonna use. You're gonna have your guitars, you're gonna have your bass, you're gonna have your drums, you're gonna have your vocals. Or for example, let's say if you're composing music for like a string quartet, then you're gonna have four parts. So you're gonna have two for violin, you're gonna have one for cello, you're gonna have one for viola. So in that case, your focus as the composer, your attention goes mostly to like the structure of the piece, the relationship between the different instruments, the different parts that they're playing, basically the composition. When it comes to hip hop, pop, or like electronic music in general, usually the focus, usually, not always, but usually the focus is on the sounds. So yeah, to answer your questions, I usually start from sounds, picking sounds, and then I let the sounds that I pick define the music that I'm about to make. I hope that made sense. <laughs> what are your thoughts on going to college for music, specifically music production engineer? Dude, every time I get asked this question, I never know how to answer it. <laughs> I'm gonna try though. So I went to music college. I went to Musicians Institute in LA, but I went for drums, not for music production, but it's probably about the same thing. From my experience, most people want to go to college for two reasons mainly. The first one is information. The second one is getting a degree. And in my opinion, both of those things are the least valuable aspects of going to music college. For me personally, looking back at it now, the things that really made it worth it where one my relationship with the teachers like that mentored me and just helped me and they still do to this day and the second one would be the college environment there's something truly magical about being locked in a space with a ton of kids that are just as passionate about music as you are and all they want to do from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep is just music 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 and a little side note if you're gonna spend all that money to go to college in my opinion I would strongly recommend doing it in a big city like for me it was LA that's just an option but a big city the reason why is because being in such a huge competitive environment is gonna make you want to work extra hard and inevitably it's gonna make you like develop connections with people that you would never have access to otherwise. Just as an example in my drum year in my drum class I was sitting next to people that ended up playing for like Stanley Clark, George Duke, Kendrick Lamar, Big Sean, Frank Ocean, just the list goes on. Just the opportunities and friendships that I developed in going to school in a city like LA like those are totally worth it. Also music college was a blast. <laughs> How do you practice playing the keys? Do you just follow something or just play? So I've been fortunate enough in my life to always have had instruments around my dad was a musician so even in my house when I was a kid there was always like a piano a guitar just something laying around for me to kind of like pick up and just have fun with I would say that the best way for me to learn a new instrument is to learn some songs, some like simple stuff and kind of try to focus on understanding how the instrument works. That to me is a very natural and fun approach. And then when you get to a point where you kind of get stuck, then you can explore the next step, maybe with a teacher or just finding something else. For example, I've been recently practicing guitar. I have some basics down, but I really wanted to take it to the next level and Skillshare has been helping me tremendously with it. If you guys don't know what Skillshare is, they're the sponsors of this video. So let me tell you about them real quick. So Skillshare is a platform with literally thousands of classes about anything and everything that you can think of. Whether you want to take a skill that you already have and kind of take it to the next level, or you want to pick up something random that you never got a chance to explore, Skillshare is honestly the best way to do it. I've been personally using Skillshare for over a year and I've used it to learn so many different things from like graphic design to like drawing to like marketing, bettering like my music skills, like so many different things. For example, at the moment I'm taking this class called Fingerstyle Guitar for Beginners by Kurt Berg. And I've been taking a class called Introduction to Spanish Guitar Techniques. All the classes I've been taking are super high quality, no ads, no interruptions. You just go there, you take your class, you learn your stuff, you're out. <laughs> anyway, if you guys want to try it out for free, I'm going to put a link at the top of the description. The first thousand people that click the link get one month for free of the full platform so you guys can just try it out. It's completely free. You got nothing to lose. Just, just do it. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, remember to be positive and positive things will happen.